Hello everyone, this is Gray Show on 7 and today I'm going over the preview of was it uh, Brass Leopard? This is the update for Code 3 that's releasing sometime in June. I don't know when. Hoping for early June because the faster this releases, the faster we can actually get some additional content updates like replays and 4v4 maps, etc. But this does handle and cover a lot of other benefits to the community and a lot of different aspects of the community. While maybe 1v1 players and 4v4 players uh, and people waiting for the replay system are not exactly happy. By the way, if you want to support my channel, like subscribe because I'm currently running a 4v4 map contest to hopefully help the community. So I'm doing my part as a Starship Troopers game releases uh, the day I record this. But still, uh, I, I'm trying to assist the community however I can. And I do like how they're at least being upfront about what is coming up and changing. I would like these updates faster, but I understand that again, they have a pipeline of stuff they have to get to. And again, I am glad I'm very happy about the changes in this that they showcase. Uh, but like I said, we'll get to that in more detail as I want to be as positive as I can be about some of this aspect and also criticize things that I rightfully think that need updated or could have been better done. In the video, you can see John, you have Marco, a gameplay designer, and Dev M, uh, which is a gameplay designer as well, which again, it's awesome that they invite someone from the community into it. So awesome job there. But uh, some of the things that they cover is airstrikes and essentially how that is changing. Because before, uh, if we go through these airstrikes, uh, they were not as great. We just see here this P-47 strike. You'd see the shadow up top. Uh, by the way, this YouTube, this is a YouTube video you can pull off their site, uh, but to get more detail, uh, but just quickly running through, you can see the plane much faster, much smoother, uh, not as choppy, and the airstrike is much more impactful. So again, that's good. They did say that they're going to make some balance changes um, to some of these. Uh, so again, maybe the rocket strike is going to be stronger. Uh, as you can see here, more consistent with the airstrike. Uh, fragmentation bomb, again, this also goes with the strafing run. All airstrikes are being adjusted in some capacity. You can see, again, the choppiness right there of that strike. And now upcoming, you're going to see pretty much a better strike, more consistent. And especially for a fragmentation bomb, it needed a bit of an update. So, hey, I'm glad it does a bit more damage to it. So, overall, not bad at all with that stuff. Um, also, we have updates with sound. Uh, they put up a bunch of videos in their Discord about the Flak 36 and the Sherman. Um, in the video itself, they do cover the MG. So I'm going to quickly go over that and turn on the audio so you guys can hear it. Um, again, it's just a lighter sound for this M1919. And again, they're doing this for multiple units and uh, they're making it sound a lot beefier. So that sounds a hell of a lot better in my opinion. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very happy with... The, the sound design on that. Um, they cut off the Sherman one, so I, I don't have that. But again, it's on their Discord, and I believe on their Twitter, that them changing a lot of those aspects. Another thing they're at, they're changing is going to be uh, the unit icons and also player uh, identification. So if we go back to the game, this is on the new 3v3 map. I'll get that in a second. You can see here Marco, right? So it's displaying that person's name over their icon, right? So that is awesome. You can have the name down here so you know who you are, right? And the and and of course your team can see that. That's uh, just the, overall pretty awesome in my opinion, right? Cuz then I know who I'm actually fighting and who's actually uh, fighting with me. So just uh, again, uh, that I enjoy and I like and I'm very excited for that uh coming up. Um, that also said, uh, let's see, they're also fixing a bunch of bugs. Campaign, they're trying to, I believe, change the AI and how it responds. So, awesome stuff there. I've been looking forward to play the campaign again uh, in a higher difficulty. So, I th feel like that will be right up my alley. Um, the other thing is this 3v3 map. And I feel like, all right, let's get to it. Because I am of a mixed opinions on this. Uh, a lot of people are disappointed because this map, which... I think it's called like C Catalan or something like that, Crossing, right? I'm, bu I'm butchering the name. But um, the thing about it is it's essentially a remake of Sittard Summer. Hopefully this thing doesn't chug like Sittard Summer. But if it doesn't, I see no reason for not to put this in auto match. Because one, there's only, I, I know there's three 3v3 maps. But one of them is a pasted copy and a shorter variation of a 4v4 map. It's okay, but I truly think that it would just be better 
if you just did, you know, you put it in because at least it gives people an option and then you can maybe veto a map, right? I put in a veto system uh, for one or two maps, right? You really can't do that for 4v4, but 3v3, 2v2, and 1v1, when there's five, four, and three maps respectively, yeah, you can put in a small little veto system. Um, the other thing is there's, I mean, this map itself at the very least is balanced uh, in it. You may be asking yourself, what, what are you talking about? Well, if you look here, it's kind of like Lurch Assault because, and again, I'll try to expand this or try to maybe move this around where there isn't as many unit icons. There's a star here, a star here, and then you have another star. So there's four stars on this map, which does make it unique. And the thing about it is people have been complaining about, well, Grayshot, I want a long game of Co3. This is it. This is the perfect example of a long term or sorry a long version of co3 you have a map that is designed not to reduce victory points unless one side pushes against the other dramatically then you start ticking down at a decent rate it's per it literally writes itself relic has the answer to the community being like well i want a longer game and they're like we're also not going to put that into matchmaking you this isn't the first 3v3 map that relic has even posted uh, for people forgetting, uh, there's a map called Benghazi, which is a 3v3 map approved by Relic. And yeah, from overall, again, it's pretty well received. And from what I limited play, uh, limited time playing with it, it was fine. Again, not the best, but it's another 3v3 map that most likely people would enjoy. I feel like giving this to the community would help them out and make 3v3s a bit more, you know, a bit more incentivized. To actually play when you have now with the other map and this five 3v3 maps easily again this is an instant win in my opinion and again for uh 1v1s and 2v 2v's and 3v3s you could add a quick veto system where it's just like okay knock it off i understand where it's like well great shot there's not many people playing in the community but if you add those features and add the additional maps i feel like you would bring in the community a lot quicker uh, but that's just me. Again, I'm not a game designer. I don't know how hard it would be to add a veto system that was in Co2 or how hard it would be to put this into the game, into the auto match system uh, or the other map into the auto match system. I, I would assume it can't be too difficult, but I feel like this would be a step in the right direction for content to bring people in to then sell your cosmetics and to have people say, hey, this game has more maps. You should probably check it out. But uh, again, uh, that that's that's just me. Um, right uh, over the course of it, they also kind of uh, went into some other things. Uh, probably the most interesting one was uh, an area where usually when you go to player settings, you can see what the enemy has. Uh, so I'm going to pull this up here. So they changed that to where now you can only see the three. Well, you can see who they are, but you can only see the three battle groups. Uh, by the way, if you hear my cat, sorry, I had to keep her outside. She was messing. Uh, she was running around while I was trying to record. But anyway, uh, in this, you can essentially go through all the different battle groups, but you don't know what they pick. Now, this also makes me think that the whatever expansion or whatever the next thing is, it's going to be adding battle groups because, I don't know, it feels weird to just have this when they're all standardized the same. Unless the next expansion, which should hopefully be out in the next few months, isn't going to bring in more battle groups, which hopefully adds more variety. Um, now, to be fair, I don't mind the idea of seeing what the enemy picked. Again, I don't feel like that changes any gameplay styles or anything like that, at least for me. Maybe the competitive guys are like, well, then now I know this guy went Breakthrough, so I, I'll do a counter. It's like, okay. You probably could have saw Breakthrough when they made a unit that had the MP40s, but what do I know? Um... But anyway, I, I'm a little iffy on that. It's like, okay, you changed it. But at the very least, they made it, you know, okay, here's all the players and here's what their colors are. And it makes it more uh, streamlined, right? But that's me. That's, again, just me. Um, but that's my overall impression, again, of what they showed. They also showed some behind the scenes, uh, not behind the scenes, but I guess a trailer for a show called FDR, probably the History Channel. Okay, um, but look, I don't mind history stuff. History Channel hasn't exactly made a lot of great history content. I could be wrong. If it's made something else really solid, please let me know in the comments below. But to me, it's a lot of YouTube contents like Kings and Generals, Armchair Historian, Time Ghost have done a way better job of being more historically accurate and entertaining. 
than a lot of stuff from the History Channel, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, they've gone over, to, they answered a bunch of questions. Again, replay mode that nothing's happening with that or observer mode. Uh, no 4v4 maps right now. Uh, but again, if you want to support my channel, I am hosting a 4v4 map competition to hopefully help the community out and make some awesome 4v4 games. So again, uh, let me know what you think of this. Again, overall, I like the changes. I feel like they can go one step further, but that's me. Let me know what you think down below. This has been Grayshaw17 doing a quick recap of the update or preview, and I'll see you all next time. Hello, everyone. This is Grayshaw17. And before y'all go, let me give a special shout out to Patreon supporters Joey G240, Malab, Big Cooch, Afaria, Ace, Pyro Shark, Tony B95, Epic Pleb. Thank you all for your incredible support and in helping me grow my channel and support my channel and everything I do. Thank you, and to the rest of you, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.